protection against all of the challenges of the world. It will take you through all tests and difficulties and worries and issues. That is, فَمَنْ تَبِعَ هُدَايَ This will be your solution to all of the problems. Just like, for example, there's a hungry person and he has the bread and chapati and he has got the dishes and he's packing it away in a, in a box and he's crying. Someone asks him, why are you crying? He says, I'm hungry, what should I do? I'm so hungry, extremely hungry. And the person will see that in these containers, what's this? He goes, there's some chapatis, there's some dal. He says that you've got present the food to eat. You've got the solution to your hunger. So why are you crying if you're hungry? Why are you crying? You've got the solution in the containers. In the same way today we're crying, shrieking out, complaining. According to, we blame the worldly factors. We, bur- we blame worldly conditions. This is extreme foolishness. Allah Ta'ala has given us such a fantastic treasure. Great na'mah and gift. In every home the Qur'an is present. There's tafsir, commentaries present. There are speeches. Masjids are all over the place. The people to explain are present. We read ourselves, we have desire. I want to read tafsir of these. Which commentary shall I read? Which tafsir is the best? We have a lot of desire. A lot of desire. So then... When we're asked, why are you crying? Because we don't practice. Just like the, there's the chapati and the, the dal, the dish. We don't eat it. We have the Quran, there's no amal. We have the masjid, no amal. We have darul ulum, no amal. We have big long titles of knowledge, no ilm, no, no amal, no practice. So the same thing will happen and the end point will be crying. There's someone who's hungry, doesn't eat. He's going to cry. He's going to hold on. Pangs of hunger. Same way Allah has given us protection, guidance. We don't utilize it, implement it. We don't go towards it, we don't pay attention to it. So then, what's the conclusion? Crying, complain, bad situation. Allah Ta'ala says, فَمَن تَبِعَ هُدَايَ Whoever takes hold of the guidance that I've given Allah says, SubhanAllah. And this is a clear message that has come to our lives. Alhamdulillah that Allah Ta'ala is giving. A clear message. Now, Whoever Nabi al Karim Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Sunnah is present, I can't be there. I will not be able to delve into that matter or, or um, affect that person. So he said, okay, I'll play another game. I'll play, an, I'll play another trick. Big answer he gave. Big answer. And he worked hard. He thought, okay, he, he's, he's advising people, leave everything. So all of the planning that I did, he said, let's put all of my plots and plans and tricks behind me. Let's just get these people from one angle. If I grab them from this angle and control them, then for me is success beyond success, said Shaitan. My mission is complete. Mission fulfilled, complete. And they were all going to Jahannam and I will trap them in this way. And this is how he plotted and planned. We forgot but he didn't forget. He has, he has tied the knot on his promise that Allah will deviate everyone. He, he said that I, I have no plans against people if they utilize Allah's resources. So what did shaitan plan? What was his trick? What was his plot? What was it, the resource that he thought he could use? The next game. That our protection, our weapon that Allah Ta'ala gives to us is protection against shaitan that would take us to success. فَقَدْ فَازَ فَوْزًا عَظِيمًا He turned us away from that path. So shaitan, to, to, he said, read, attain knowledge, learn Quran, recitation, qiraat, do umrah and hajj and give sadaqat, charity, do pious deeds, good deeds, pray. He knows that all of this effort, there's a ruh, spirit, soul, all of these. That if you obey my Nabi and you live according to the sunnah, then your salah is accepted, your hajj will be accepted, your umrah will be umrah. The sadaqat will be counted as charity. Everything will be counted, accepted at that time if it's done in the accordance to the sunnah of the Holy Prophet wasallam. If your life is according, according, in accordance to the sunnah sharia, then it's accepted, all your deeds. So he said, I'll let them pray and, and worship. There are hundreds of thousands in gatherings, big conferences, and uh, mashallah, big, big gatherings we have. And to make a gathering takes a minute. Click of the finger. Shaitan supports the gathering. But... But in that gathering, a special one factor he instills, that the Holy Prophet some Sunan Sharia should not be communicated in this gathering. Shouldn't be shared. What about lengthy marches, mosques will be filled up. 
But his desire, in fact, is that all the people that sat there, the leaders, the heads, from their mouth, these words will come out. Ishq, love will come out. Tears will roll down their cheeks. They'll start shaking and shaking their heads. Everything they'll do. And people feel emotions. But the real message should not come out from their mouths. And what is that? Subhanallah. Our holy beloved Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Sunnah should not be disseminated. This is the plan of shaitan. Kitab Allah, Quran and the Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Sunnah Sharifa, he will create an opposition to that, a replacement to that. What is that? Shurul umuri muhudasatuha. What will that be? Kullu bidatan, kullu bidatan dalala. All innovation is dalala, wretchedness. Cursed. Any action that's in opposition to the Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, that will be bidah. What is bidah? Bidah, innovation is that action. Fit deen, which will be brought into the deen. It's not lit deen, it's fit deen. One is to support the deen, doing an action to support the deen. To support the deen. To assist the deen. To adopt an action. Yes? One is fit deen. That within the deen, to create something. In other words, to make it deen. Consider it that, yes, I'm doing right. And this the word. What he'll do? That instead of the sunnah, take out the sunnah, take out the methodology of the sunnah, do away with the sunnah, and replace that with his own opinions, his own words, his own deen he will create. And how will he realize those actions? There will be no dalil, no proof from sharia. The action where there's no sharia, dalil, and a person says that this is deen and this is Islam, that's bidah. That action... Yani from hadith, from the Qur'an, if there's no sharia proof, or from the salafus salihin, the pious predecessors. If there's no, uh, you can say guidance from the Qur'an or the hadith and the practice of the salafus salihin, yani kitab Allah, wa sunnah wa sallam, apart from that there's education, input, yes, which will be against the sharia and the sunnah. These actions will be against the sharia and the sunnah. It will be a new way of life that will come into the deen. That never has been heard of. The Salafus Salihin, Salihin never heard of it. The Tabin, the Tabatabin, the Sahaba Ikram, no generation saw this. It was not present at that time. It was not taught. So such words will be created and an attraction will be created in those words that people, they will hasten to that teaching and that will become deen. That's what Allah's Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa said. The kitab Allah, Allah's kitab, the Quran. The second is my path, the sunnah. Kitab Allah, which is the great guidance. And my hidayah, my guidance, which is my path, my practice, my method. Great adheem. Third, sharul umuru. Muhdathatuha wa kullu bidatun dalala. That it will be the worst of actions that will have no backing. They will be included in my deen, won't be my sunnah, won't be proved from the Quran. Those things are called bidah, innovation. So this is the success of shaitan in this day and age, that he will create new ways, new practices. So if we look around today in the society, we'll have gatherings, we'll have lengthy, lengthy discussions. Number one, you won't hear any words about the sunnah in that gathering. No statements about the sunnah, it doesn't matter which people are sat there, all will be non-sharia practice. Non-sharia practice. No one will dare to come on the stage and speak against them. They will speak around the subject, they will bypass the core for hours, they will talk philosophy and lengthy discussions, but no one will dare to speak plain and simple, like I am explaining, to come into the uh, stage. There'll be maybe tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands, and there'll be no discussion about kitab and sunnah. No, nobody will dare to say that. Nobody will be there to tell them that you're saying wrong. This is not the deen that you're presenting. There are gatherings of hundreds of thousands, but no one who's speaking there will say that from their tongues, because they'll have khawf fear inside their hearts. If I speak about the deen, then, um, then my seat will be removed from me. My, my status will be degraded. How can I speak about this, the true deen? So what has shaitan created? Instead of the kitab and the sunnah, he's created a new methodology. New philosophy, new way of thinking about this. The Holy Prophet said, What will this be? In the fasad al ummati. That in that time when there'll be most fasad in my ummah. In the fasad al ummati. This is the generation, the era of fitna and fasad. 
At that time when bidas, bidas will be prevalent, uh, common, and the Sharia and the Sunnah of the Holy Prophet ﷺ will be degraded, demoted. Allah's Nabi ﷺ said about this day and age, this will be the age of fitna. This is the era of fitna. Fasad, trials, challenges. What will happen in the morning? A person will be a mu'min. In the evening, he'll be a disbeliever. As Abu Raira narrated this hadith in Mishqat. This is present. In Sahih Muslim, this hadith is present. That such a dangerous generation that the Sunnah and Sharia will be demoted, bidat will be mixed, the whole dunya will be filled with bidat and innovations, cultures, traditions. The whole dunya will be filled with bidat, innovations. The deen will be eliminated. From man tabi hudaya. The, the, then the khawf will go uh, and the, the khawf of dunya will come the Prophet said that will be the day and age of fitna and the fitna will descend from the skies through the night and in another place just like the, the droplets of rain that drop from the skies fitna will drop from the skies in our homes there will be fitna outside, fitna in our shops, fitna in the masjid, fitna outside, fitna on the streets, fitna everywhere. Fitna beyond fitna is what we see. Fitna beyond fitna. Sin, just like the droplets of rain that drop, the fitnas are falling from the sky. You know when the, the rain falls and the drops of rain fall, what do we do? What do we do? Yes, we take protection, shelter, some shade or a shelter. We take the umbrella in our hands. We try to protect ourselves from the wet rain. Allah's Rasul has given the meaning of the era of fitna, the generation of fitna. There'll be so much fitna that the person will be a mu'min in the morning, evening disbeliever. And he'll speak in the morning like a mu'min, by the evening will forget. And he'll start doing actions of, of disbelief. Example, easy. For example, Juma, he'll put all the clothes on, the attire on. Juma, as soon as Juma ends, he'll go and do all the sinful actions. All the sinful actions, everything is permissible. With ease he will run after the impermissible actions. Everything you'll see, a parent, a person doing, opposites, opposites. In other words, morning he's a mu'min, evening, opposite. Yeah, he was okay just a little while ago, he was in the masjid, he was praying salah. Look at him now, his labas has come off, his attire has come off, and everything's finished, all his practice is gone. To this extent, that we see and we don't even, we're not even surprised anymore, that the mother herself, she wears a modest, uh, and she says to her daughter, hey daughter, wear these clothes, they look nice, and people will say good things to you when you go out. Wear this lebas, dirty, naked attire, the mother will select daughter, son wear this, the father will buy the clothes. Father will say, daughter, you look very nice, my daughter, today, that uh, don't make too many boyfriends when you go out. And this is the society we are living in today. Plain simple. Yes, that we will, mothers and fathers will receive their friends when they come to the home. Is there any man in his heart? Which mother, which religion? Come, come, this open society, freedom, modern society. These things now, they're finished, the deen's finished. We have to be uh, embracing. But even then, in our, in our wardrobes, we see... Uh, mashallah and the shelves the cupboards the parts or portions of the Quran subhanallah this is the mu'min shaitan has won just one thing one reason because he's taken the sunnah out if sunnah was present in our lives then our children's tarbiyah our own tarbiyah home outside everything be according to the sunnah then how could our daughter's children be spoiled? Tell me how. No dirty place you send your children. If you got sunnah in your hands, in your lives, and Quran, Wahid will testify. If you take all of the deen, فَمَنْ تَبِعَ هُدَايَ Then Allah says, I promise that don't worry about the generation, the area, the dunya, it belongs to Allah. Every hemisphere belongs to Allah. Don't worry. Don't worry. Allah says, first and foremost, we need to